that was basically when my spiritual awakening actually happened um what i had learned there was so profound like i, I just sat there one day and i thought to myself like why didn't why didn't we learn this in school <laughs> yes you know like, <laughs> like seriously why did we not learn this in school like i wish i learned this before i was probably like 27 or something at the time but i mean i at that time like whatever we, you know and it was just it was not just like a talk that he had he actually taught us uh like pranakriyas like this breathing technique yeah 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 and um healing it was all about self healing you know and um that really just like opened me up it like it like put me on a, like another level you know and i felt so um free and light right. after that you know but i still had this nagging feeling that i needed to teach something Hi everyone, welcome back to Zen and Now, where we deep dive into all things wellness, mental health, and a living and healthy living and a balanced life. Today we have a, an, a truly inspiring guest with us, um, somebody who is a, a spiritual coach, certified Reiki practitioner, with a passion for empowering women to connect with their inner selves, health, and step into their highest potential. Through her work, she helps women realize emotional blockages, align their energy, and live with a greater purpose and clarity. Please help me welcome Amisha Nata to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Kishan, for that introduction. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I'm looking forward to our, our chat. No worries. So let's begin. Um, I think we've known each other for what? Almost 27 years now, give or take? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think we were in primary school together. I'm yes. Asking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's been it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I've said, we've we've known each other for quite a bit, and it's good to connect again. Yeah, you know, it's like I was just thinking about it. it's it's weird how, you know, how life brings you, um, you know, those people that you know you've never seen for how many years, um, and in such um, different ways. You know, um, it's like I had a friend um, also in primary school. I don't know if you remember her, Nirali. She moved to the States, like okay. very young. But anyway, we uh, we were like close friends. And I mean, I uh, when, when I moved over here, we found we had mutual family that we know. And so we had a, a common, um, yeah, you know, common family that we, we kind of knew. And um, there was a wedding happening and she was, she so happened to attend the same wedding. And that's how we met. And we were like, wow, this is like amazing, you know? And um, yeah, you still realize how, how life can unfold and you know it's like it's like we would never think okay we'll talk to each other like this one day you know it's yeah just, yeah i never ever i never yeah. thought of like having something like this on my as as a you know as a hobby or something i do on the side and just to reconnect with people that you know i've known throughout my life it, it's such a blessing like we get to reconnect and then just right. talk about you know life and whatever is happening because uh, a lot has happened and and i think mm -hmm. it's it's We've also got stories to tell and it's good to share like you know probably help somebody out there whoever's oh, yeah. going through something and i reached out because i saw like you're doing good work with your reiki and you know i'm into that space now and just to understand like how what challenges you have and you know what's your what's your your main drive and all of those things so i think my reason for for connecting was to actually just you know reconnect and also just find out how you're doing and where you are with your with your practice yeah yeah, so um, basically, um, since I moved, um, uh, I have, I've seen a few clients since I moved, but really, I think in the past year, I would say I have not really taken on major clients, um, because it's just because you know, life is so busy. Um, I have a five year old son, so he keeps me so busy. And, um, you know, we, we have so many things going on. And um, so yeah, I have not seen much of clients lately, but um, yeah, definitely going to get back into that. But yeah, it's been it's been you know moving, and I'm sure you know is is it's a lot. It takes a lot. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of change that happens, and it's a lot of adjusting that that we need to do. And um, you know, and I'm 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 very easily um, adaptable. So for me, it wasn't it was not to say that it wasn't you know difficult. But, I think I I coped better, um, you know, and also with 
with having this Reiki by my side, you know, um, it's really helped me to deal with difficulties or challenges much, much more easily. Um, right. So, so yeah, it's, um, it's been a good change though, definitely. Um, but you know, you miss home, you miss, right, <laughs> you miss yeah. being around the people that you know, your comfort zone and the food and the places to go and your family, friends. But um, that's the only thing about like over here in the United States, everything is so far away and isolated that mm -hmm. it's so difficult to get people together, you know, right. to, to even go out for, for, for whatever reason, you know, so, but yeah, it's, um, for the most part, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. It's a, it's a good move and, um, yeah, adjusted to everything. Um, the only thing is, you know, it's, um, what I did find challenging is getting, finding clients initially, um, right. you know, in a different place, in a different, um, you know, you usually like in, in South Africa, it's just, you're used to working mostly with the Indian community, you know, um, and, uh, yeah, so it, it was a, definitely a big change over here, learning how the people are over here, you know, right. what, what they used to and how, how they live and, um, over here is also, it's a very, very fast paced life. It's just, people are just busy, busy, busy on the go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's for the most part, it's, uh, you know, since COVID though, it's, everything's moved on online, um, which, yeah, which also kind of changed my, um, my approach to my coaching and my Reiki. Um, so basically everything of mine is moved online as well. Um, I really love doing the one-on-one -on -one connection with clients. So um, I still, I still keep that, you know, um, option open. Um, apart from the group coaching or you know workshops and things but yeah it's uh, i find that though with you know the online coaching you know you can reach a more broader right audience, you know um so you're not just stuck to your to your area where you live in but um yeah for the most part it's it's so far it's been good <laughs> right yeah amazing and where did where did the 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 interest spark like for to actually get into this practice where did it where did it originate? Um, so for me, it um, I think it was back in like 2013. I had I was always spiritually inclined. You know, anything spiritually spiritual would like just I'd be drawn to it. Um, so um, yeah, I think in like 2013 I did a Reiki course um, <clears throat> because I was just like I was just really curious about it. I, I had you know seen a lot of people do Reiki and I've heard a lot about it and its benefits and things, but I then decided, I researched about it and I decided to do a course in it. And the year, the year after that in 2014, I had like, um, I would say like a calling, like, you know, I just had this nagging knowing or this like thought that kept, you know, coming into my visions and coming into my thoughts that I needed to teach something. Right. You know? I, at night I used to sometimes even like, you know, when it's time to go to bed, I would like, when I'm closing my eyes, I would see this vision like of me standing in front of an audience and like teaching something. And I don't know what I'm teaching, but I know I'm teaching something, you know, and that, that was like, initially I just brushed it off and thought of oh, whatever, maybe my mind is playing tricks on me or whatever. But yeah. after that, it became so prominent, like it became really prominent and the message was so clear that I had then decided, okay, I cannot, there's something in this, you know, maybe this is my message for, you know, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing, my purpose, yeah. the path that I should, should be following. And I um, I then, you know, I mean, months went by, or weeks went by, or whatever it was. And I then was, um, I think it was my mother that had this book on uh, Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. Um, and I just happened to read that book. I came across it and I read about it. And it was so um, interesting like everything about that book was just like every word I was like hooked to it you know and also in that year just after that I had attended a seminar with uh, my guru uh, from India where he came to actually South Africa and I attended the course uh, actually the seminar with my mom and I didn't know much about him or you know what it was all about but like I said I was spiritually inclined so I went yeah. for it and you know what I had, that was basically when my spiritual awakening actually happened. Um, what I had learned there was so 
profound. Like I, I just sat there one day and I thought to myself, like, why didn't why didn't we learn this in school? <laughs> yes. You know, like, <laughs> like seriously, why did we not learn this in school? Like I wish I learned this before. I was probably like 27 or something at the time, but I mean, I at that time, like whatever we, you know, and it was just it was not just like a talk that he had. He actually taught us uh like pran kriyas like this breathing technique yeah, yeah, yeah. and um healing it was all about self-healing you know and um that really just like opened me up it like it like put me on like another level you know and i felt so um free and light right. after that you know but i still had this nagging feeling that i needed to teach something you know i, I was satisfied with what what you know what he taught me, the self-healing and everything. But it wasn't enough, like, what do I teach these people that I'm wanting to teach, you know? And one day then I, I you know, you get those magazines, those local magazines where they put ads and stuff. And I came across this Louise Hayes, um, it was like a two-day workshop thing, um, you know, and it was based on that book that I had read of, of Louise Hayes. And I was so drawn to it. I was like, okay, I'm going to go for this. It's a workshop that I'm going to be attending. So let me see what it's about. And I attended it. And that was just like, that was it for me. This is, I decided then that this is because I had that experience. I went through that experience. So I know what it's like, you know, yeah. if I had to do that for, for other people. Um, and I knew it immediately that this is what I'm going to be teaching. You know, um, I did the course then, um, on the on the, the workshop facilitation training and there was a coaching course as well offered like a year or two later and i went for that as well and um yeah that was really um also eye-opening because the in the workshop itself you know i you 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 doing whatever it is that you're learning and whatever it is that you're doing is right there and then so you're right. experiencing it there. in the moment you know um and whatever it was like you know it's anger fear guilt whatever it is that you're feeling is um you're letting those emotions out and you there's also a space for you to you know um react how to react when yeah you're yeah about. right so um so that was yeah def definitely a profound um thing for me and then obviously with the coaching goes much more deeper and um in depth into the the whole healing process um and so yeah it, at that time i um i did the course the, the spiritual coaching and during that time i was actually i had a business of um you know i had a beauty salon because i did um after school i did uh, i pursued a career in um, aesthetics right beauty aesthetics so at that time so i had my business my beauty business and i had clients already and you know it, it was I realized then that I work well with people, you know, uh, that's what made me realize I work with, well with people because most of your clients, you know, you build a relationship with them over the years and your regular clients, you build a relationship with them. And um, I also kind of noticed that I was very intuitive towards yeah. certain clients' uh, feelings and, you know, um, uh, and, and the emotions. So, um definitely the, the reiki and the, the coaching was something meant for me you know um, like a that, calling uh, yeah like a calling that i was it's something i meant to do so yeah i uh, that's how my whole uh, coaching career started i then stopped doing the, the beauty because this was more my passion right. and, you know calling and um um yeah it's it and it's it's really just um helped with you know at the time as well before i uh, i moved to the, to the states is when i closed my beauty business so while i was doing the beauty as well i had seen some clients on on you know on weekends or after hours for uh, reiki or coaching and um that's how it basically started off right um so yeah well a lot of people a lot of people uh uh, actually now finding their calling and it's awesome to hear that you actually did find that um that reiki is your calling and to help people i, th I think is uh i think it's just a like how we say you know prasad for us oh, yes. <laughs> you yeah, know it's yes. just an it's offering here, you know yes yes, yes. Uh, and that's one of the things we learned in, in in you know with my my guru is that 
um, you know, always do seva, always, uh, you know, help others in whichever way you can. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky. I always tell myself that I'm very lucky that I had that opportunity to, 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 you know, find my calling yeah. early in my life, you know, and, um, and to actually take action upon it, um, and follow my, my yeah. intuition or my gut right. to, to, to do it. Um, so yeah. Your, your guru, how, how, how influential has he been until, has he been, you know, in your practice, uh, from the beginning up until now, do you still do you still follow follow his his, his practices, or oh, yes. is it something that you just you just have you know in the background? Yeah. So I mean, I initially, you know, when 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 um, when I attended his seminars and things, um, you know, there's a whole lot of um, spiritual practices that he you know asks you to do at home, uh, obviously for your spiritual benefit. Right. Um, whether you do it or not is is your choice. You know. Um, but I, I continued with whatever it was. It's, it was more meditations, like a, a lot of meditation and a lot of the breathing exercises, um, which I did, uh, you know, up to a certain time. And, you know, when this calling for my coaching and that started, I, um, I did follow it, but, you know, it wasn't like an everyday thing, mm -hmm. you know, um, so what I what I definitely whatever I've learned from from him though is I carry it through where you know throughout my life it's in whatever I do it's it's always there within me it's engraved right. in me like you know right. <laughs> um, but it's just that you know sometimes you know time you you don't have that what if one whole hour to sit and do a meditation sometimes you know or thirty minutes or whatever it is and um, yes I'd love to have that time to do it but you know sometimes. So sometimes when I do remember or when I not remember, so when I do have the time or when I just have that urge to like, okay, I, today I really want to do this, you know, yeah. then I sit and do the meditation or the breathing exercises or the, you know, there's a book that we, that we have to read and stuff. So on those days, I follow my intuition. So I do it on those days because there's a reason why I'm, my intuition is calling for, you know, right. Um, and definitely his teachings, I always incorporate his teachings into my my own life and into my clients or into my coaching and into my reiki. Um, you know, it's not that um, that I've forgotten it and don't you know ever do it. He's he's still a, a part. I mean, once a person is your guru, he's your guru for life. You know, okay. whether you practice it or not, it's, he's still your guru. So it's just up to the individual or you to to keep that connection. Um, you know, Alive. Yeah. between you and your guru going. So, so in that sense, doing your meditation or sometimes, you know, if, if, if I don't have the time to do the meditation, it's, I just simply just close my eyes and I yeah. think of him, you know, and the connection already builds there by just right. thinking of your guru, you know, um, and same with Reiki, you know, sometimes if you don't have, you know, cause Reiki in, involves some prior, um, energies. Yeah. Uh, rituals or, or I won't say rituals but it's just prior things you need to do before your clients come in or for yourself you know and yeah it's, yeah sometimes just to center things, yourself out yes sometimes those things can, those things can be time consuming so it's I just simply just close my eyes and I think of it I just think of Reiki or think of the intention that I want to bring in that moment and it's there you know I can feel it flowing in my hands already so yeah. so um so yeah it's 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 um it's really up to to the individual so it's 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 what what i'm being called to do and i, I follow that so yeah i definitely <laughs> i won't say I, I do it every day and i'm like you know holy and this and that but um yeah i mean it, it's it's one of uh, the tools that i have you know that um i'll never forget um you know and it's it's sometimes it's it's i have to like remind like my mom did the whole thing with me you know and sometimes it's you know in conversation it's like Sometimes I have to remind her that, oh, you know, you need to maybe just do this because yeah. that's what she taught us, you know, and maybe that will help and stuff like that, you know. And then she reminds me and whatever it is. So it's like, um, yeah, it's just always there. You know, it's 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 there. And, you know, the, the, the nice thing about it is like, that's also one thing that I'm so, um, I feel so grateful and, and, and lucky that I found him as well, you know, early in my life. Right. Um, because funny enough, there's like this mantra um, that he um, 
he taught us and uh, you know it's like if you play it's a musical um, mantra and you play it in your house or you play it in your you know wherever you are in your workspace or whatever it is it just brings about those positive vibrations within your environment and when my son was a baby i played that music in his crib or in right. his room you know since he was a baby i've been playing that and you will not believe like till now these days where um he will say he wants to me to play that mantra and he'll fall asleep with that mantra. so oh, it's, you know, amazing. It's, it's it's amazing how it, it, he may not know what that mantra means or anything you know but you know according to the you know my my guru he says like you don't need to know what it means but if it's playing in the background it's already doing what it needs to do the mantra is doing yeah. its magic you know it's it's transforming the energy in the, in the room or the space yeah. you probably and, if your son felt that that calmness and just growing up he you know he introduced that into his his life and he knows right. that that calms him down right right and and you know i made it a point to 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 show him because um there's actually a meditation where for kids that he's there's an app that we follow now with, with you know for for my guru and um he um yeah so he's created like meditations for kids to follow you know for the for their mental health and right. their focus and you know um clarity and stuff and i did one meditation with him and you know it's it's so important to explain to your kids these things because we were not explained all these things no. you know, when we were young you know and because i had that knowledge i explained to him what the meditation is i explained to him who my guru is and you know when he sees his picture he knows now that that's that's my guru like you know okay. um and so so yeah i was surprised when because you know when i showed him the meditation because it's 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 it was easy it's, it's just a picture and it's like you know when you close your eyes you have to like picture it with, picture, with yeah. your eyes closed kind of thing and um I don't know if he got it or not, but I mean, because I can, I can't be in his mind, you know, and I don't know if he's seen the picture and although he says it, but it's just, it's training their mind from a young age, you know, to, to learn these things. So they are able to then, you know, navigate, utilize yeah. these tools and navigate their, yeah, their, their life to however they, you know, they, to create that, that peace and calmness in their yeah. life. Um, I think kids are very, very intuitive. They, they see a lot of things and feel a lot of things that, adults oh, don't yeah. um exactly yeah that's right before we continue with today's episode if you're enjoying it if i could ask you for a small favor please like share and subscribe to the channel it will not only help the channel grow but it will also allow me to bring you a lot more guests and a lot more experiences thank you back to the show and going back to like you know you said when you know we wish we did this in school i feel the same like i wish we had like you know even just a uh, between breaks, even just like a five or 10 minute, you know, allocation just to go and oh, center yeah. yourself before you get to the next class. Next class, exactly. You know, it yeah, it's, it's, it's so amazing that, uh, you know, there are, I know there are some schools in, in certain countries teaching meditation. Um, uh, I think it's in Norway or something. I'm not too sure. But Probably, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just like, you know, I just wish children, they should do that in schools, you know, for children, because, you know, I, sp I see it with my son, especially like, um you know kids in their class and you know they i mean kids are kids they're going to be noisy they're going to be loud no, for they're, sure. they're going to be fidgety and whatever yeah. it is but i guess there's you know there's that little bit you know planting i call it planting the seed where you know they don't have to do it but you can just tell them about it you know yes whether they learn from it or not it's it's a different story but at least teaching them about it telling them hey you know if you if you want to calm yourself or if you need to you know take a break or whatever you can just take a few deep breaths or whatever it is you know yes. uh, and I, i've taught my son that you know take Good. three deep breaths just to calm yourself when you feel angry or yeah. mad or whatever it is, anxious you know? yeah and if if teachers could just teach that to the kids you know um i mean it's also the parents duty to teach that but if they teach it in the schools kids would realize that okay this is it's a it's normal it's something that everybody's learning you know yeah it's a life lesson yeah. yes it's not just them learning it at home you know or whatever it is so so yeah i mean um i always try and teach my son whatever as much as i can um you know to to his age level as well and to what yeah he, to his yeah capacity, what he can handle so um i think also yeah. you don't want to inundate him with so much 
too quickly exactly. because he's already absorbing you know so much of information already right. especially yeah. in the digital age that we live yes and with meditations you know for kids you have to it's not like the meditation that we would sit and do it's like it needs to be fun for them you know yeah. so it's like um there's so many um there's a book that i i have on you know for kids meditations and you know it just there's so many you can choose from and it depends on what kind what you really want your son to, or child to do in that moment like a sleep meditation or a, just something fun or a breath work meditation or a mindfulness meditation things like that and it's just about incorporating fun things you know like hot chocolate like breathing in you know the same yeah, yeah. hot chocolate and then blowing it out to get it cool or whatever so yeah things like that he um at least they know then you know the basic basic you know and as they grow it's you know it's obviously you learn you yeah get deeper and more Int interesting for them so yeah. But I think also for life, I mean, it's it's excellent for life uh, challenges because sometimes, I mean, we, I mean, only in my latter years did I learn about just breath work, you know, because I struggle with, with anxiety and anxiousness. And if I known like, okay, this is a practice you, you can do just to calm the entire central nervous system down before you, yes. before you act on, uh, upon whatever you need to do, you know, it would have been, it would, it would help me in sport. It would, I mean, sport does help you to breathe. But it's just being mindful aware, mindfulness, right. of, like mindful aware of it. That, okay, yeah. this is what I need to practice. I'm in this position right now, and this, and this is this is a tool I have to to navigate. But I think, like you said, like you teach, like the, the student, like the teachers can do so much. But it's also like the parents' responsibility to impart that knowledge onto their kids as well. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, like we said, like I said, it's you know, for them, like you know, like you said, we have anxiety and. I mean, I also get that sometimes, you know, and it's it's important to know, to have those tools, um, you know, to for you to be able to cope, you know, so the minute, the minute you have, and it's also about being aware um, of when, you know, when you tend to yes. have, like, you know, Awareness, like, yeah. time, like, say, uh, like maybe something's triggering you and you, you know, getting the anxiety. So it, it, it helps to, to know when also to, to use those tools and, um, but yeah, it's it's it's. I, I think it's gearing towards that way where um, schools would, I think, eventually be able to teach. All yeah, this. it'd be a benefit, it'd be a massive yeah, benefit. Definitely, definitely. And I think a lot of, not just the parents, like not other kids. I think the teachers also need it. Then. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yes, a lot of teachers need it though. Yeah, but. Um, oh. And um, within your practice, I mean, also like I know you. I mean, you grew up in South Africa, you know, the dynamics of a fast paced life. And now you're seeing it in, in America. Um, like for me coming to Canada, we actually had to slow down because okay, life, right. yeah, life here is not as fast paced as we were used to, you know, you wake up uh -huh. at a certain time, you go to work, you come back, you've got certain things to do. Whereas over here, it's more like, okay, take your time. Work day starts a bit later, you know, make sure that you you spend time with your family even if there's vac like vacation days take it if right. there's long weekends you know make sure you spend time with your family so we had to unlearn like a lot of the, the, oh, yeah. the like the rat race and just, mm -hmm. just be and live um which is in a challenge in itself <laughs> you yes. know yeah. and I, what i wanted to ask you is um coming from south africa and then also learning to get get clients on on the other side of the world how challenging was it you know to actually um you know put yourself out there and and, and also build your clientele um yeah so i must say though so uh coming here um you know the way i live it's it's for the north of california so it's a bit slow paced here okay. in this town where i live um uh and so, yeah, that for me, that was also like a big change because like, you know, like you say, coming from South Africa, it's like this fast paced life, living in the city and stuff like that. And over here, it's it's slow paced where like, you know, we don't really get traffic over here um, unless it's really going down to the main highway. But it's, it's yeah, you don't have to worry about traffic over here. And, you know, it's it's that was a bit of a change for me because I was so used to the the fast paced life. but. I actually enjoy the slow paced life over here because it's, you know, it's, it slows you down. You, you, you have, you, um, you have the oh. time to, 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 
to do things you couldn't do, you know, for yourself before. And also, um, um, you know, work-wise, business-wise, it's just you have the time to reflect and and slow down. You know, it's, it's right. literally teaching your mind to basically slow down, you know. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, um, initially when I came, um, I think it must have been like two or three years after I came um, is when I really started my coaching practice. Um, so I went full on online. I did not see any physical um, contact with clients. Um, and it was challenging. It still kind of is sometimes challenging in the beginning because where I am, um, it's a lot of more older people that live here, um, you know, and it's a lot of people that you know, I would say a lot of people that don't want to better their lives, you know. Um, okay, they're comfortable where they places, are. Yeah, there's certain places where, so like in Los Angeles, for example, we have a, a home down there too, and we go there often. So down there, it's 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 completely different to where where I am here. And there you can see, it's it's like South Africa. It's like the fast pace life. It's a big, you know, big city life. Things are happening there. Um, and, and people there are, they, you can see they want to make that change. You know, there are people. Yeah, yeah, they're a bit more they, open to the practice. Yes, they're more yeah, open. Yeah. They want to. They want to better their lives, and so it's much easier over there. But like I said, over here, it was just a bit challenging to see clients, um, one on one. You know, uh, and physically. Yeah. And that's also what made me, you know, go online, um, basically, um, and I think now though a lot of people. Um, you know, over here have tried a lot of these, you know, healing modalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are learning to be more open with it uh, or about it and trying trying them out. Um, and although I, I actually think over here in this town itself, um, there's not, people don't really, you know, expose themselves like how in bigger cities, you know, they would market themselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, like every second place would have their details on it or um you know every, every person would know about them kind of thing you know it's 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 very different in that sense when south africa you know your friends your family everyone you know puts that word out for you yeah and you have a network no yeah. yeah and over here because you know everyone's isolated it's it's difficult for that to actually happen so um so yeah definitely i think online works better um in that sense um and you know like also with covid you know, in, in between, it just messed up everything, I think, in, right. in, with that, in that sense with, you know, seeing people um, physically. Um, a lot of businesses closed down as well. So um, it was just a bad time uh, for businesses as well. And, right. and yeah, because, you know, my son was born in 2018. So since then as well, I have, uh, you know, I always said that I want to give my full time and attention to my, yeah. you know, to my son. Um, so, so that was also one of the reasons why um, I stopped taking clients for a certain time. So, but now, you know, now he's much older and I'm ready to, to move on and, um, you know, uh, start seeing more clients um, on a regular basis. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 I, I don't think it would be that challenging right now, though, um, but, uh, you know, with COVID being over and people are starting to see clients one-on-one -on -one. so right um so yeah it's 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 it definitely is challenging in, initially you know um and it takes it takes time i think to get to know your the people around you and right. what works for them and what doesn't work for them um and yeah it is very different to to how we were brought up into south africa like you, right. know, you, you just know your your people around yeah. you, you know um but do you so, feel yeah. like do you feel like uh you know, even though it is a challenge, it's also like something that you're learning as you go along to oh, yes. different different yeah. cultures. You know, you lo you're learning different customs, and I think, yes. do you feel that? Yeah, it, it's it's definitely a learning. Uh, you know, for me, I, I always say everything, everything, every day is a learning experience, no matter how small it is. You know, um, so yeah, it's it's, and I'm very open to to learning about different cultures, different. Um, how diff how different people live how um you know what's the reason behind 
they, a challenge or something. They, yeah, they challenge or the reason why they do certain things. And I've always been curious in that sense. And, um, you know, my, my son goes to a Christian school. Uh, it's a private school and it's a Christian school. And, you know, we chose to to send him to the Christian school because there is no Indian community here um, or Indian, you know, school, like Gujarati school, like how we went. You know, yeah, we, we yeah. don't have that here. Right. Um, and so, um, you know, we just thought that sending him to this Christian school, because it's a faith-based school, regardless of religion, I mean, he's still going to be disciplined in that sense of growing up, learning that there is, you know, um, a higher power out there or like God out there, whether it's Jesus or Christian, whatever it is, you know, yeah. whatever it is, you know. Um, and, and I'm, we open to it. I mean, my husband went to the same Christian school that he's going to right now. And he's, he's, you know, he's still very much, um, you know, not to say that he, uh, he's not <laughs> cultural, but, um, he's very much still follows our Indian culture, you know, and he, um, um, it's not to say that he's different, you know, because many people that we've told that, oh my, you know, our son goes to a Christian school, they were like, shocked like oh is he gonna become christian now and i'm like no <laughs> he's not gonna become christian but you know it's just the values that he'll be learning exactly he's exactly taught, you know yeah. um it, it's because like i said we we learned those values in in our Gujarati school right? for sure what, you know what, what uh, our prayers and our why we pray and certain things like that so i mean we grew up in in a, in a basically uh, not not only on, not not only brown community but we did grow up with other ethnicities as well oh, yeah. so yeah. it's not it's the same thing right it's the same thing right yeah. it's not it's so, nothing different it's just no. because it was classified as oh in an in indian school it, yes. people's perceptions were oh he, they would learn their cultures and whatever but it doesn't matter we were we we went to school our primary schools high schools we were all with different ethnicities culture uh, with christianity with oh, yeah. uh, tamil yeah. hinduism whatever it was mm -hmm. so we were we were already exposed to to that to culture, it, yeah. but the values that we learned were important. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's that's one of the reasons why we, you know, we sent him there. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's you know, it's uh, we he he actually, you know, we sent him to to um, you know because there's no Gujarati school. There was a online uh, school in Los Angeles that was teaching, and we did it for for like one whatever it was one season um and it was just a bit challenging because it was a sunday morning at like at 8 a.m and you know he's still like just waking up and you know it, that's not something a child wants to do straight away early in the morning as soon as they wake up you know so that was just one of the challenges but um yeah and uh, well, the reason uh, we do have other schools that we uh, or online schools that we we, we approached and um right thinking, you know, sending him to, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, at least basic values and basic discipline he'll be learning in, in that school, you know? So, so yeah, it's like, I, I love learning about different religions, how they do things, why they do things. Um, I'm always curious about, yeah, behavior, like why, and, you know, people do okay. so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, I mean, I've never, I've always wanted to go to a church also, and I've never been to, I mean, I've been to my school's son's, uh, son's post -church, school yeah. church now, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just interesting, like, you know, like sometimes, you know, you see in the movies or the, the bells ringing in the church. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's like it just stunning. looks so amazing. Yeah. And I just wanted to one day go and just feel the energy there because definitely you can, there must, there has to be some, you know, okay. energy. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, um, a tip for if you ever go to Austria and Vienna. Uh -huh. So on my on my socials, I posted about uh, Saint Peter's Church, I think, and okay. it's the mo like it's really stunning. But regardless of the architecture, the peace, like the energies inside of it, was so pure. Like my wife and I, the first time we went in, we felt it, and the next day we went, you know, we went touring and whatever else, and we did, you know, it was really a busy day. And we just yeah. felt like we needed a place to just center ourselves again. Right. And we went into a church. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with that? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we just sat in there five, 10 minutes, centered ourselves, and then we went again. But yeah. it was that pure energy that, you know, that 
allowed us to be yes exactly and for and that's people. what it is people can go to a mandir to a to a temple to a synagogue whatever yes. but it's the intention what you go in with exactly. you know yeah. i mean yeah. all faith is is welcomed we you have to like accept all kinds right. of faith right. not just your own yeah you practice your your faith, your faith but yes. we also have to accept others have their practices as well Definitely, yeah, and then that's what you know. Um, we trying to teach my son as well, you know. So, so yeah, I think it's important to to be open to to other religions and other faiths and right practices as well, yeah. And within your practice, like I know it's it's predominantly targeted towards towards women. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do you have male clients as well, or is it specifically women? So uh, you know, initially I did have I did have male clients, um, and that was back in South Africa. And then when I was here as well, I did have one male client. But um, since then, I have not had male clients. Um, I, I mean, it's not to say that I will not take on male clients. You know, I mean, helping someone is helping someone. You know, you're not going to reject it. Right. But I I I prefer working predominantly with women, um, mainly because. I see, I grew up, and I, I'm sure you can relate as well. Um, we grew up like, you know, seeing our mothers or our aunts for that matter, always, you know, serving others, you know, always pleasing others, um, always going out of their way to do things for others, but themselves, you know, never doing things for themselves or for their own happiness, you know. Um, right. And, and and it's almost as if they were just, you know, were always just, that was their life. It's just like, yeah. you know, being in the house, if they had no career, it was just being in the house and doing things for the family or for the, you know, um, kids or whatever it is. But, you know, um, uh, women are very also emotional, you know, mm -hmm. so being in that environment where, where, where they can't let out the emotions or release the emotions, um, or talk about the emotions, you know, right, uh, right. openly, um, kind of shuts them off and builds like a wall where that's not like where they, where they, that's just for them to know and for them to deal with, or maybe not even deal with it. They just, you know, brush it off and forget about it, um, which obviously creates a lot of problems, you know, later on. It, it creates right. burnout and it creates anger within you and frustration and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just grew up seeing, you know, I, I still see it till today, though, but a lot of women and, and, and you know, mothers especially um, going through this way, you know, they just feel so um, burned out. Right. And, and they don't have the time to work on themselves or to, to, to do something for themselves, for their own happiness or for their own, you know, um, enjoyment or health or whatever it is, you know, for, uh, it's always putting others first before them. Yeah. And not to say that you shouldn't put others first, but they need to there's be a limit. A, you know, yeah, there's a, a limit. There needs to be a balance and limit. So yeah, for that reason, um, um, yeah, I, I just feel like women need more um but more support. But more, more support. support for that right. emotional release to happen, you know, and and I'm um, me being a mother right now, I can I can see how how it affects them, you know, or how you know, all these years, like, I mean, my mom, you know, she, she herself tells me, she's like, you know, whatever it is I want to do in life, I should go and do it, you know, and not be like her or like the mm -hmm. other mothers out there or like the other, you know, from their generation. Yeah, generation. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they never had those opportunities or uh, they never had this knowledge that we have right now. Yeah. You know, to, to better themselves or to, to think that, oh, okay, you know, now let me, they didn't know about self-love, you know, <laughs> self-love is- Yeah, like self-love was, was giving. Exactly. Self, self-love to them was not even self-love. It was just like giving to others is, is love, you know, but um, yeah, you know, she, she, she always encourages me to, to do what I need to do for myself, but you obviously have to acknowledge those that, you know, with living with you, your, 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 the rest of your family, but, um, because they never had the time and the opportunity and the knowledge to, to do all that. So, yeah. um, and she wishes they did, you know, um, they, they, I mean, whatever they did is what their parents taught them and they didn't know any better. And it's not to say it's their fault. Exactly. What yeah. they knew at the time, you know? Um, so 
so yeah, I mean, um, knowing what I know is, 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 it's in, in, I, I always try and practice it in my daily life and, and to impart uh, that, yeah, to impart to that knowledge it, onto my life, make it a way of life, you know, right. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of people think that it's, it's something separate, but you know, if you just incorporate it into your daily life, um, then it becomes, you know, your part of your life, it becomes right. your, um, like a way of life. Yeah. yeah. So, like you said, like uh, a lot of, a lot of our generational mothers um, have so much of trauma also that they've never dealt with. Oh yes. Probably right. before, you know, and they've never spoken about it. We don't know about it. I'm pretty sure uh, my mom has gone through a lot of things. She has spoken about some things, but not all of it. Yes. But there's, uh, like you said, like you have you you now you provide an, uh, a space where where the woman can come in and actually. You know, start begin to release those those traumatic events and start to be accepting of them and, and you know start to heal i know yeah. it, it's never too late to start to heal oh, no. never, um never. so i think what you're doing is an amazing job and uh, you know um whoever's out there, whoever watches this or listens to this podcast whoever's out there in la or even around the world um please reach out to amisha and then you know to get your healing journey going thank you thank you yes it's it's um it's important, and I think now a, a lot of people are becoming aware of, uh, you know, there's so many healing modalities out there. And what I've learned recently is, uh, you know, um, about somatic healing. Um, and it's so interesting how all these things are like related to each other, you know. Um, and somatic healing is more dealing with the body. Yeah, I was so, just about to ask, what is somatic yeah, healing? Yeah, so somatic healing is <clears throat> more dealing with the body. Um, so um, I don't know much about it. Like, I mean, I'm not a you know somatic practitioner or anything. But from what I've learned so far, it's yeah, it's dealing with the body. So um, listening to your body, in other words, you know. Right. Um, so if you're uh, like in a moment of uh, anxiety or like in a moment of you know being triggered in whatever way it is, it's in that moment listening to your body like how your body is actually feeling you know um and, and how can you then you know bring that body back to its balance um you know um it's like you know your nervous system as well yeah. so like you know being in a fight to flight mode and yeah. how to bring that into the back into the parasympathetic um state you right. know, yeah. state of rest relaxation and uh digestion so yeah it's 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 more about that, you know, um, and um, it's important because I think your body also plays an important role in in uh, in your healing. It's not just oh yeah yeah the body listens your emotions yeah. or your feelings. Um, you know, your body also plays a really important role. So yeah, it's I think women it, it, there's a lot more exposure out there now for a lot of these tools. You know, um, and it's all obviously doing what feels called to you that what you feel um you know works with you um yeah is more important so yeah I, I, a lot of women are, are, are um looking towards all these different modalities to to yeah cope with the whatever it is they go and, through and i know like as a practitioner also yourself you need someone uh, you oh, yes. also need so like my, my next question for you was or thought was how, when you take on these 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 women's energies how do you feel like do you do you take yourself out of it or it, do you feel something as well while 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 practicing so, so, it? yeah so what um so like i said prior to you know um prior to any healing session it's it's important that we as practitioners ground ourselves mm -hmm. center ourselves um grounding is so important because then you don't take on your clients energy. yeah you know? Okay. So there's there's um yeah practice um there's um tools that you can do um use and 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 practices that you can do beforehand um to ground and center yourself um and then of course definitely after the session to ground yourself again and let go of those energies because you don't want to carry those energies yeah with yeah the day or you know whatever it is and um for me though I'm like uh, I would say most Reiki practitioners are the you know, very feeling type. I'm, I'm very, um, like if someone's, you know, if someone's a uh, client's with me or anybody for that matter, I'm very attuned to the, the, the feeling aspect of, of them. I'm very empathetic. Yeah. So, um, 
I would immediately just know what that person's feeling, you know, right. Scared or sad or whatever it is, you know, and um, so with me, it's happened a few times in sessions where I actually cry myself or I okay. actually have this overwhelming feeling of actually crying or just like my heart, like, you know, pul pulsating yeah. at like a, you know, higher um, speed and stuff like that. And that's just me feeling the energy because the energy is being, it's like being so strong, you know, yeah. um, but also making sure at the end that, uh, at the end of that session that you ground yourself and, you know, let go of those energies so you don't take that on on with you. So it's, it's very important to, to yeah. do that. And I myself, as a Reiki practitioner, um, it's important for us to have Reiki on ourselves as well. It's yeah. important for us to get that cleansing done as well, you know, on a regular basis. So, um, yeah, I, I, I do that at least, you know, once a month. Um, okay. Because, you know, also for you, although you know Reiki, how it works and, what, you know, the whole thing about it, but when someone else does it for you, they may see things you may not see about exactly yourself. yeah because you know, i mean so, you're going through life you're going through life and you you're going through your own challenges and you know exactly. you also need that outlet not just exactly you can't just like be always like giving yourself yeah. away yeah right. exactly yeah. so they 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 better able to see things or you know have a different perspective of you know how they see things um or view things and it's 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 nice to know what what other people um, or what, what your practitioner is finding, you know, in, in you as well, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, it's important to, to, to regularly do as a practitioner, to regularly do Reiki on myself and, uh, you know, do those grounding and uh, centering techniques to um, keep, yeah, to, to not take on those energies. And thankfully, you know, initially when I did start doing the Reiki, um, when you don't do that, you actually feel very drained mm -hmm. and very tired. And I was feeling that initially. Um, I used to feel very tired and very drained and didn't understand why initially. And afterwards, I found out, I realized that, you know, it could be this Reiki that I'm doing because it's always when I'm doing Reiki, I feel like. Yeah. Reiki. And um, that's when I realized that, okay, I really need to step up my game now. You know, I need to really do it before, after. Uh, sometimes you can even do it during, it just depends on, you know, um, if you can, you know, yeah, yeah. It. but, um, during your session, you, you know, your energy is mainly focused on your, your client. So, um, you, it's also important to keep your environment centered, grounded, um, and very relaxed for, for the client. So the energy can flow, um, you know, yeah. easily. So, so yeah, those, those, those grounding is very, very important. Definitely. Yeah. And how do you like, are you able to like find balance between like, did you, were you able to find balance between, you know, home life and, and your practice or was, was that also like a, a challenge in the beginning, but you, you managed to bring that back? Um, you know, it never was really a challenge for me until I got married and had a kid. <laughs> so because you know when you when you um because now you have to look after a little you know another version of yourself basically yeah. <laughs> um it's 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 very time consuming um to um you know you have a lot more going on when you have a kid to handle then you i have you know being married also it's different responsibilities you yeah know, you know, have to see to to um the housework and the cooking and the cleaning and the, all that so um, in that sense, yes, it's very difficult to to find that that balance. I mean, still right now, I still sometimes struggle to find that balance. But um, you know, a lot of times it's um, it, it's 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 all it's all about finding and making the time to for yourself. Because only when you find that balance within yourself can you find that balance elsewhere yeah. or without you know outside of you. Um, because if you're not balanced or aligned to your, your, your inner truth or your own energy, you're going to be all over the show, all you're the show be, yeah. you know, um, overwhelmed and you're not going to know what to do and, you know, where to start. So 100%. it's important. Um, yeah, I definitely have my days like that though, but I, I'm, I know I have these tools to fall back on, you know, like if I didn't do it today, I can, if I needed more structure the next day, I know, okay, let me work on this. You know, I have this 
to I can just do a quick Reiki session on myself or just, you know, centering um, or narrating to myself for that matter. I, I like narrating to myself that in positive statements like affirmations, yeah, affirmations, right? Um, you know, or guided meditations or something like that. Um, um, so, so yeah, those, those kind of things help balance, um, you know, balance your out. Yeah, balance your do you, do you and, find like, do you find like a lot of, uh, moms, especially now new age moms, uh, come to you and, and express you know, the exact same thing? Oh yes. 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 I, I feel like it's, um, it's like, um, every mom's, um, outlet, you know, it's like they, it's, 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 this is what they, they basically, uh, scream for is, is just that time and attention for themselves, you know, um, what about the dads? What about the dads? Do they, cause I know nowadays a lot of more dads are more, more hands-on, they're more yeah. like aware of what's going on. Not like our dads were, you oh, know? No. So do you find I that? Never, I mean, you know, I, 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 Definitely, um, those hands-on dads definitely, um, uh, you know, help with uh, making the the women's role better. You know, a little bit less stressful. You know, they both take on certain tasks um, to help each other out. Like you know, so yeah. the, the work can get done. Basically, you know, it's not about competition. Like who's doing this and who's doing that. It's about just working together and getting it done. But I, I think men just process differently than what women do, you know, the emotions, they, yeah. you know, like men were just taught, okay, don't, don't cry, you know, crying yeah. is a sign of weakness, or, you know, you shouldn't be talking about your emotions or your feelings, because that's just showing you how you, how weak you are. Weak you, you know? are, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of dads are also awakening to that, that that's not the case, you know, that, you know, they, they are very much human, as women are, you know, and they also have feelings. Um, and I just feel they don't, um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Maybe they, they don't stress about it understand. too much. Okay. Yeah, they, they don't stress about it too much, maybe, um, or take them because women like tend to, to, you know, they want to have it all together. They want to have it all or, uh, like be perfect, you know, like I need to do this, 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 and I need to, you know, whatever it is, you know, they do wanna, you feel that way? I do. Yes. Okay. I always feel that way. It's like, I want to do everything. I want to be everything to everyone in the family, you know, it's <laughs> like, cause you, you're the mother, you're the wife, you're the daughter, you know, you're the daughter, you're the friend, you're the whatever, you know, yeah. employee, uh, entrepreneur, whatever. And I think women have this um, thing where they're juggling all these roles and they just want to be everything to everyone, you know, where, um, you know, it's just like a way it's just like taking a step back and thinking, okay, I can't be everything to everyone. Yeah, it's not possible. In this moment, I can't be everything to everyone. Exactly. So what is it? Like if it's something to do with your child, like in this moment, my child needs this. So I'm going to be focusing on on that, you know. But it's 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 very difficult to to stay focused sometimes as well, because I see that with myself. Like, you know, while while I'm doing something with my son, if he's, you know, got a spelling test that he needs to learn and whatever and i'm thinking about the food that i'm going to make for dinner <laughs> and you know or what we're going to eat tomorrow you know oh, stuff yeah. like that. but i think creating mindfulness uh, meditation is so important because um mindfulness teaches you to be in the present moment you know um and i think that's what what women definitely need a lot of is being in the present moment yeah um and I think, yeah, cultivating that in your everyday life is, is so important because um, with, it, even if it's not just mine, it's just taking a deep breath, you know, a mm -hmm. um, few deep breaths and just calming yourself, you know, like putting your hand on your heart and like taking a few deep breaths and just letting it go, like whatever your, whatever your feelings are, your overwhelm, your worries, your thoughts, and just like being in that moment because that's yeah. going to help you be in that moment, you know, and go about your day and sometimes you know it takes like maybe 51 breaths in a day to do that like deep breath you know like sitting in you know but as you go along it it will become a part of your, your yeah. daily life you know so it will become much more easier um and if i mean if they if the women have the time you know to do at least maybe 10 minutes in the morning you know after they wake up or 10 minutes or 15 minutes or however much time they have before bed it's it's so important. So I usually sometimes I find before bed is like the best time 
um, for me. Um, because you've got most of your tasks done. You've got most of your yes, of your and I'm not really a morning. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really a morning person either. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So before bed is when I do like, you know, if I feel I need to do some reiki for myself, I I just do it. I listen to a quick meditation, or I just listen to like soothing, calming reiki music on its own, just to get myself into that balance. And um, or if I need to just whatever I feel called for in that moment, you know, I just feel it's also about again, you know, listening to yourself. Yeah. Like, what do I need in this moment? moment? Do I need a deep breath? Do I need to just sit and do nothing? Do I need to journal? You know, what is it? It's, uh, it's like really asking yourself what you need and then doing that, you know, um, because it's only, I feel like when you really ask yourself those questions, you have, you only, you have the answers to your questions. Right. So it's, it's always like, ask yourself the question and then just feel what your 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 body's trying to tell you or what your you know mind is saying your emotions are telling you and and you know you can figure out something then you decide on that note what you you plan to do or what you want to do or how you can help yourself better um journaling really really helps writing i always say writing really helps um mm-hmm. you know for for um releasing emotions like anger fear guilt grief whatever it is I always um, say writing it down, writing whatever it is you're feeling on the paper and then burning the paper. Burning it, yeah. Um, it's a practice can... that, yeah, it's a yeah. practice that I have incorporated because I'm not very vocal about my, how I feel. Uh, yeah. So for me, journaling and then just expressing how I feel, at least I know I'm taking it out of my my my, yes. my center so, and then just yes. putting it somewhere external. And then even if it's not burned, it's fine. I know it's out of my system. Exactly, yes. And you know, once you, that, that, burning sensation once it's done you actually feel so free and mm-hmm. light you know um so i always say um it's something i do myself um you know and if you can't you're not able to burn it you can always just tear it up and, and throw it away but you know it's always the intention as really well is, behind yeah. what you're doing so when you're tearing it up or burning it up it's like really just closing your eyes or just thinking about that intention that i'm letting go of these emotions that are holding me back or whatever it is you know whatever it is that you you right. written down. Um, so those those little practices make such a big, big difference. And a lot of times uh, people think that you need oh one whole hour just to, to do some spiritual practices to feel good. But you don't, some people don't have the full one hour, but you may just incorporate it throughout your day, like five minutes before lunch or five minutes before bed or while you're driving to work as well, yeah. you know, or whatever it is, or in the shower, you know. Yeah. Uh, shower is a good time to just listen to like a podcast also or something, you know, yeah. music or something you know um like for so me that. for me my spiritual release is exercise or being active oh, you yes. know yes. so yes. i think a lot of people also it's not just just the the, the meditation and, and and spirituality that people like are attracted like can use as spirituality i think like you said it's one aspect of it some people have different ways of 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 expressing and 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 you know calming themselves down right yeah yeah exercise is really really good you know you it lets your um uh, emotions out and uh, um, yeah it gives it release the dead dopamine that, that, it, that it releases, right? yes it releases the dopamine and it also uh I, I think any form like yoga for that matter as well or you know pilates or whatever i mean even walking right mm-hmm. stuff like that and um you know i we've just incorporated started walking um my husband and i as well every day um you know for health reasons as well and yeah. uh, so yeah just walking also just you know um and while walking as well you can listen to a meditation or obviously not a relaxing meditation but a podcast or a piece of music or, or, or something inspirational you know that that you won't have the time otherwise to listen to or even um, just nature or even just nature, exactly the sounds and the, the just admi- admiring yeah. of nature. You know, uh, we forget that. You know, sometimes even while walking, you forget that. Okay, you can look around and you know, <laughs> yeah. enjoy the, you know environment. But luckily for for me, like around here, uh, you know, we surrounded by the redwood trees, and so it's just always amazing. We 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 um, there's a park that you know my son loves to go play at, and they actually have a, like a trail for walking and this. Uh, you know, you're surrounded by the 
it's like a forest it's like you yeah you, like nature yeah, yeah you know nature yeah and you're in the river trees and down there's like a duck pond and it's just amazing to just sit Be. There. i would just yeah. love to sit in between all those trees and you know trees are also very grounding so it's uh, really good to be around trees. They they are very grounding for you. And um, I mean, they provide us life. You know what I'm saying? And yes, and provide <laughs> you know oxygen. So yeah, it's um, nature is, is is a great healer as well, definitely. Um, yeah. So yeah. No, amazing. Thank you for thank you for sharing your journey and your your insights. I think a lot of people are gonna be, you know, very uh, very attracted to to what you have to offer and. You know, I always ask my guests this at the end of the podcast, like, mm -hmm. what's next for you? Like, where do you, within the short term, what's the plans? What, where do you see yourself, uh, you know, in life and just anywhere? So, um, I have not really thought that far, though. I don't like thinking very far off. But, uh, but yeah, um, I like to take, you know, life as it unfolds. Um, but for the most part, yes, I definitely... Um, uh, would love to um, start up with my workshops, um, you know, whether it's in person or online. Um, uh, you know, it's good. that's just going to depend on the clients. But um, yeah, definitely uh, move ahead with my workshops because that's something I have not been able to do since I've been here. Um, and, you know, in a workshop setting, it's very different because with all the people that are in the workshop or in the, you know, the, the people in the group, they they bring about such a dynamic energy right that it's 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 funny how like the people in the group you know uh, if they have to work with each other they find out things about each other that are so related to their own lives you know and it's so amazing how um there's a lot of aha moments that happen in group coaching or group workshops and stuff like that um and people also feel like they're not alone in group coaching you know there's always someone out there yeah exactly the same kind of you know problem or issues that you have if not better or if not worse you know but it's it's um group settings are always fun i think um and challenging also uh but yeah you learn a lot you know you learn different perspectives from different people and um <clears throat> uh, how to navigate you know through through the eyes of different uh, people and um, yeah I just like to get my um, coaching going and uh, yeah you know I mean um, obviously keep teaching my son things as, as he as he grows you grows know up, uh, yeah. you know it's also this thing about uh, you know we're talking about how men you know with their feelings and how they're not expressing and uh, um, how, how they were brought up not not to express themselves and you know it's it's like with my son I always uh, you know tell him that it's it's okay to, to, to feel whatever you're feeling. Like, yeah. it's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel sad or mad or whatever. But it's always, it's never okay to behave in a certain way. Yeah. You know, like if you're angry, you don't throw things or whatever. Don't lash out, yeah. You can be angry, but there's different ways of coping, you know, or dealing with your anger. So, it's always a behavior that comes with, with uh, um, emotions, you know. Yeah. So, um so yeah, continuing to, to 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 teach my son, you know, um, whatever I, I I know and whatever I learned, and um, yeah, just you know, looking forward to to being, you know, serving others, serving uh, lots more clients. Um, I also one day always hope to have my own podcast. So <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> I'll need you're on your way. Uh, you're on your way. Yeah, <laughs> I'll need some tips from you for that. No but problem, yeah, anytime. <laughs> Yeah, it's a... Um, just start. That's my advice to you. Just start. I know. I know. It's, it's <laughs> definitely, you know, it's... it's. Also, um, I always uh, had this urge to um, write a book one day. I always... That's still in, in my cards. Um, it's just not... Um, priority. Priority right now, yes. Um, and I just feel like, you know, when the time is right, it will, it will happen. Because, you mm -hmm. know, writing a book is... It doesn't just happen also... No, no, for sure. Overnight. You know, it takes a you know, a year or two to, to really get it going and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely in the future, a podcast and my book. Um, but for now, I'm just continuing with my clients and workshops. And I do offer a six, it's a six-week uh, group coaching um, 
study oh. course. So, um, yeah, if anyone's interested. That, that's on your website as well? Um, I currently don't have a website, but yes, they can on Instagram um, and my email, um, contact me. Um, and yeah, definitely, um, yeah, looking forward to working with all my clients. <laughs> Amazing. <clients. laughs> Yeah, and of course, no, it's been such a fun any, chat. If yeah. you need any any sessions as well, you know, I'm, I'm welcome. I'm open to. No, thank you. I appreciate I'll that. Bring it to you as well. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, you're done. You're doing amazing work, and uh, I wish you all the best in in your future endeavors. Um, and so uh, let's connect again sometime in the future. Oh yes. Definitely. Come visit us in Toronto. Yeah, we will. When I'm down there, I'll definitely yeah give you a call. <laughs> I actually have a friend in LA also. I need to come and see. So maybe. Oh yeah. One yeah. You can, Ooh. yeah, we can meet up in. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, which part of uh, LA do you know? I think he's in LA, LA. Like oh, okay, right. Downtown okay. LA, yeah. I think, but maybe a few minutes out, but uh, yeah. He's also from, he's he's from Lens as well, so. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, LA is so huge. It's it's like, you know, it's, it's really huge. Um, But uh, yeah, definitely we can always make a plan to. Amazing. Yeah. No, but thank you for your time today. I really appreciate no, thank it. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, um, it's a great podcast that you have. And yeah, keep it up. Uh, thank you. Look forward to all the other interviews you're going to be having. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Anytime. Until the next one, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.